I'm hurting, baby. I'm broken down. I need your loving, loving. I need it now. When I'm without you, I'm something weak. You got me begging, begging. I'm on my knees. Don't wanna be needing your love. Just wanna be deep in your love, and it's killing me when you're away. Where you are, I wanna be there where you are. I gotta get one little taste. Well, sugar, yes, please. Won't you come and put it down on me? Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Sugar by Maroon 5. Now, this is a really cool song. There's some interesting stuff going on. It's basically four chords all of the way through the whole thing. So it's a nice one for beginners because you can do like really simple strumming. You can explore different strumming patterns on it. There's actually a cool way of playing pretty much the right chords, but still in open position, which is kind of interesting as well. Um, and then if you want to play it just like the record, you want to use these kind of bar positions, which there's a couple of chords in there that are slightly less usual than your regular bar chords, but it's a lot of fun to play. So uh, let's get to a close up and check out how to do it. So the first thing I should mention is you're going to need a capo or capo at the first fret if you're going to play along with the original recording. You don't need a capo on if you're going to play it at a party or whatever, only if you're going to play it along with the original recording. So uh, the chords that we need, the first one's an F major 7. Now, any of you beginners out there that have just heard the word F and run off or trying to turn the video off as quickly as you can, it's not big bad F, it's not the bar chord one. This one's a lot easier to play. Perfectly good for a beginner to, to be playing for sure. Uh, we do third finger in the 3rd fret of the 4th string, 2nd finger 2nd fret of the 3rd string, 1st finger 1st fret of the 2nd string, and an open 1st string. Okay, that's relative to the capo I'm talking about now, in case you hadn't gathered that. Okay, that's the first chord we need, F major 7. Then we need an A minor chord. Regular A minor chord, we're not playing the thicker string, then open, 2nd fret, 2nd fret, 1st fret, open. Very standard kind of a beginner chord. Then we've got D minor. Okay, we're not playing the thickest two strings, then we've got open, second fret, third fret, first fret. And it's totally fine to use your little finger there as well in the third fret of the second string. Some people find it a bit of a stretch there putting the third finger. I, I most often play it with a little finger, so it's perfectly okay to be doing that. And then at last chord we need a C chord. Okay, we're not playing the thickest string, then third fret, second fret, open, first fret, open. That's the chords that we need. And it's a bar of each. So it's F major 7, 2, 3, 4, A minor, 2, 3, 4, D minor, 2, 3, 4, to C. Okay, I'm going to take you through the different rhythms that you can use when we're back in the white, after I've gone through the chords, because you can use all the different rhythms on, depending on what chord sequences you uh, fancy playing. But it's the, the beginning. I'm hurting, baby, I'm broken down. I need your loving, loving, I need it now. And the next part, the I wanna be needing your love, just wanna be deep in your love, and it's killing me when you're away. And the chorus, sugar, yes please, won't you come and put it down on me? It's the same, it's just the same sequence there. So you can really explore, you know, different rhythms and stuff to make the song interesting. But let's, while we're in the close-up, let's have a look at these other chords. So the first chord, F major seven, the actual grip that they're playing on the record is this. So it's the same as F major seven, but you lift off your second finger. So then you've got nothing on the thickest two strings, third fret, open, first fret, open. We're going to be doing a bar chord version of that one later on to be exactly like the original recording, but that is still the same chord. Sounds really cool. And then the second chord, instead of regular A minor, we lift off third finger and we get an A minor 7 chord, okay? So uh, nothing on the thickest string, then open, second, open, first, open. That's an A minor 7. Now the D minor, I keep changing my mind when I'm listening to the record as to whether it stays as a regular D minor or it goes to a D minor 7, because they both kind of work for me. For a, a, a D minor 7, you do a first finger bar covering the thinnest two strings and the second finger, second fret, third string. Same place as it was for a regular D minor. So there's a D minor, well, normally first finger would be there, and then to get to a D minor 7, you just reposition the first finger to do a bar on the thinnest two strings. That would be D minor 7. And then the C stays the same. So again, I need you, baby. I need you, baby. I need you, 
love and love and I need it now Sugar, yes please Won't you come and put it down on me It's the same sequence again for all of the different things but So let's have a look at the actual chords from the original recording uh, None of these need the capo now as well So you, you don't really need to have the capo on or capo on um, This first chord uh, is exactly the same same notes as that we had in the open position but when you play it uh, up here it's got a slightly different texture uh, so what we're going for nothing on the thicker string then we've got the uh, ninth fret and this is the actual fret I'm talking about now not relative to the capo okay so the actual fret is the ninth fret and then first finger is barring the sixth fret for strings four three and two and lifting up okay so that you don't want the bar to be sitting back because we don't really want to get that note we want the top note to be the second string and you do that just by putting that first finger knuckle forward a bit if I bring it back there's the note and as I bring it forward there comes a point where it stops holding down the the first string but it's still holding down the second string okay so that's what we're going for with the first finger and little finger there that's the first chord okay this is it's still an F major 9 Okay, or actually the actual pitch is F sharp relative to the capo it's an F major 9 it gets a little bit confusing doesn't it anyway the next chord okay this one is a B flat minor 7 relative to the capo it's an A minor 7 uh, and what we're doing here is we're using the third finger to cover the same strings as our first finger was covering before that's the sixth fret strings 4 3 and 2 and lifting up again so again there just push that knuckle forward a bit and then the thinner string will stop ringing out. Put second finger down on the bass note, which you're, it's kind of reaching over the third finger when you're doing this grip. Don't try and put it next to it, just reach over. You'll find that it automatically mutes the middle string, the fifth string as well. Okay, so that's the second chord. Third chord. Okay, we're going again for, I'm gonna use the D minor seven here, but it can be D minor or D minor seven. I'm talking now relative to the capo. The actual chord is uh, E flat minor or E flat minor seven. If you don't understand this difference here, it might be worth giving a little bit of thought as to what happens when you put the capo on the, on the first fret. But anyway, so you can lift off that little finger or have it down. There's nothing on the thicker string. Sixth fret, uh, eighth fret, eighth fret, seventh fret. And then again, we don't really want to hear this top note. Okay, just we want to hear that note as being the top. So just mute the thinner string by lift, again the bar. Just lift the bar a little bit until it it'll mute that thinner string. And then we go to a bar chord. This is a, a C sharp bar chord relative to the capo. It's a C chord. Uh, pretty standard bar chord shape, A shape bar chord. Nothing on the thicker string. Third fret, fifth fret, fifth fret, fifth fret, and again the knuckle forward there just to make sure that the thinner string isn't ringing out. So if we get that sequence. Okay, let's go and have a look at some rhythms. Okay, so no matter which choice of chords you've made, the rhythms are going to be pretty adaptable for any different type of chords. And one of the things that you might like to try is using a different rhythm in the verses as the choruses, because it'll kind of make it sound a little bit more interesting if you're playing at a party. If you're doing like a five minute song with the same chords and the same rhythm, it's likely to get a little bit kind of samey, you know. And if you listen to the original recording, you can certainly hear that there's lots of sections in the song. It doesn't sound like it's the same four chords all the way through. It's got a lot of variation in the production. That's the kind of thing that you need to think about, at least a little bit, if you're going to play it by yourself and, and have people sing along. So the different options that you've got, the first thing is definitely just to do the simple strumming, like one, two, three, four, strum, two, three, four. Because like for the verses or an intro, that can actually work real good. You don't have to get more fancy than that. You know, it doesn't matter if you're doing the fancy chords or not. It works just as well here to be doing those fancier chords. Or even the bar chords version, if you wanted to do that one. Okay, so that would be kind of first option, very, very sparse. You could try doing a little push, so that the actual rhythm on the record, actually I'll show you the rhythm on the record first and then we'll come back a stage, is this one and two and three, four, 
one and two and three four so one and two and three four 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 okay easiest for that is going down down mute down mute one and two and three four one and two and three four down down mute down mute down down mute down mute again one and two and three four one and two and three four again one and two and three four one and two and three four one and two and three four okay straight away I'm keeping it fairly straight but that same rhythm especially with the bar chords starting to sound pretty cool like the original recording you know get get a nice uh, kind of poppy sound there when you if you give it a little bit of energy as well and d don't be scared of kind of giving it a little bit of a hit you know you know, I'm not bashing your life out of your guitar but it's definitely it's got a different texture to or it's just it's not the same as you get a little bit more bite to it you know um, it could also help if you're doing the bar chords one you get a bit of uh, relief by relaxing the chord grip so without having to do a mute on here relaxing the chord will make the note stop so on those first two if I keep the chord down you can hear la la da but if I, I can shorten it as well just as another option because these are all different things you know when you're playing it can be quite different to have or they're only subtle, a bit bitey, slightly, you know, slightly smoother, you know, so these are options for you to, to have a bit of a play with. Um, and it would work exactly the same on those, um, on the open, that, that first rhythm. Relaxing the chords doesn't work so much so well with the uh, the open chords, but these are just you know ideas, things to play about with. Um, in the middle section of the song, you know you could always just play a few notes from it as well. As long as you're aware of where, excuse me, where the pulse is, you could have. You know, this is the kind of tune because it's so simple harmonically. You know, the thing that you've got to play about with is your rhythm. So you can either go for the one and two and three, four, which is like the record most of the way through. Little sections again, listen to the original recording and have a listen to the where they've made those dynamic movements where the song gets really big for the choruses and kind of chills out a bit more for the verses. And try and copy that with the way that you choose different rhythm patterns. Okay, because that's the thing that the tool that you've got when the chords are the same. You could always do like what I did in the little intro thing and do the open chords there for the verses and then move up into the bar chords for the chorus. That's a nice way of kind of differentiating the sections as well because I'm just kind of, I'm looking out for your audience here, man, because if you do the same thing all of the way through, it is going to, you know, put people to sleep a bit. Unless they're singing along and having a good time, then you can do whatever you like. Um, so, I hope that gives you a good understanding of this tune and some various ways to play it. You take care of yourselves. See you for plenty more lessons very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.